normally in our everyday lives, when you're sitting at a desk or, you know, just like hanging out in your house, you feel like you're not moving. Um, but if you think about it a little bit, you know that we actually are moving. The Earth is rotating and it's um, orbiting the sun and the sun is moving around the galaxy. And um, even the galaxies are um, in motion in larger and larger structures throughout the universe. So we definitely know that we're moving um, based on all those considerations. But can we tell how much we're moving? Are we moving really fast in some absolute scale? Are we moving really slowly? Is there some, um, is there some object in the universe that is not moving that everyone can agree on? Um, and also, can we tell? Does it matter? Um, if maybe it doesn't make any difference if we're in motion or not, and then we don't have to worry about it. So those are the things that I want to talk about in this video. Um, and surprisingly enough, the, um, the first part of the answer to this question came about from Galileo 400 years ago. So um, according to Galilean relativity, um, the following things are true. Okay, and I want to um, distinguish Galilean relativity from Einstein's theory of um, special relativity and general relativity. Um, Galileo's theory was the basis for those things. Um, and it's a lot simpler and you know, less exotic than what you might be thinking of. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to draw a um, coordinate system. Okay, so here's my coordinate system. And the coordinate system has an X and a Y. And I'm going to name the coordinate system itself S. So S is the name for this XY coordinate system. And in that coordinate system, I want to find the position of some point. So I'm going to call the position of that object, let's assume there's an object there, um, R0 comma S. So the zero indicates um, that it's the position of the object. S tells me the coordinate system. So um, position of object relative to frame S. Okay, and then I want to draw a second coordinate system over here. And I'll call this one S prime. So the coordinates here will be X prime and Y prime. Okay, so we'll be able to tell which coordinate system we're using based on whether it has primes or not. So if I want to show the position of that same object in um, frame S, well, I'm measuring from a different spot. So now the position vector is going to look like this, and this is going to be R0 S prime. So that's the position of the object in frame S prime. Okay, well, if I want to relate these two things to each other, then what I need to do is find the position um, of the two coordinate systems. So I can draw a vector over here that points to the origin of my second coordinate system relative to the first one. Okay, so what is that vector? Well, this is the position of S prime in coordinate system S. Okay, so again, same notation, position of what in what frame. Okay, so um, at this point, we um, have a lot of stuff going on. We have all these different vectors floating around, but there's only actually one object with an actual position. Everything else is just based on where we're drawing our coordinate systems. Um, but what I want to do is figure out if there's some relationship between all these different vectors. And if you look, you can see that I've drawn a triangle of vectors. And so there is in fact some relationship between them. Um, using pirate map rules, if you take a, a minute to think about this, if we follow along this vector and then back along this vector, that gives us the third vector like this. So that relationship then is R O S, is going to be equal to R S prime S plus R O S prime. Um, and what I'm going to do actually is reverse the order of the second two um, because there's sort of a notational trick that will come about from that. So R O S is equal to R O S prime plus R S prime S. Okay, and so the reason that this is useful is because if you notice, these two inside subscripts um, are the same. And if I look at what else is present on the right-hand side, the other subscripts, I have an O, and then I have an S, which is the same thing that appears on the left. So we can think of this as contracting the subscript. Um, and we can actually use that trick um, in order to do more complicated arrangements. So if you had multiple coordinate systems or you um, have different positions uh, and you're not exactly sure how they all relate to each other because this can get pretty confusing, if you're able to write down an expression that follows this pattern where the two on the left-hand side are the first and the last on the right-hand side and the ones in the middle are the same as each other, then um, you have written down a correct relativity relationship. Okay, so um, that's great. That's a trick that we can use when we're actually solving problems relating to relative motion. But um, we can actually do a little more with this to answer the original question that we were interested in. So if we have information about positions, what is the next thing that we do typically in physics? Well, we take a derivative and see some information about the velocities. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take a derivative of everything. And when I do, what I'm going to get is V of the object relative to frame S is equal to V of the object relative to frame S prime plus V of frame S prime relative to S. Okay, so again, um, these two um, velocities are actual velocities of objects. Um, you know, the people measuring those would you know, be able to use like a radar gun or meter sticks and stopwatches. They come up with velocities. This one is the velocity of the two reference frames. 
Okay, so um, the, two, the two coordinate systems, one might be, say, on the ground and one might be in a moving car, they may um, have a velocity relative to each other. The two frames are not required to be fixed in place relative to each other, they could move around in different ways. Okay, um, so let's take another derivative. If we do that, we get accelerations. So the acceleration of the object in frame s is equal to the acceleration of the object in frame s prime plus the acceleration of s prime relative to s. Okay, so nothing particularly fancy appears to have happened here. Um, we're just taking more derivative and seeing what happens. But let's do something else. Let's take these accelerations and multiply by the mass of the object, right? So if I multiply by the mass of the object, then what I'm going to get is the net force on the object in frame s, which equals the net force on the object in frame s prime, plus the mass of the object times the acceleration of s prime relative to s. Well, um, we want the two forces to be equal to each other. If you're measuring the forces on an object, then those should be based on things like gravity, tension, normal forces. These are actual real things that we can measure with real devices. And so the net force should be the same no matter what. We don't want two different people to disagree about what forces are present. Um, that would be a nightmare for physics if um, you know the forces that are present in some situation depend on how you're looking at the problem, then it seems like physics doesn't make any sense at all. So these um, two things that I've underlined here should be actual forces like um, gravity, um, tension, and so on. So those aren't things that are made up. Those are actual real things. Um, and if that's the case, that means that we need this term to be zero. Okay, so if that term is zero, that means that um, frames, reference frames, must not be accelerating relative to each other. Because if they are, then we'll have to make up different forces in different reference frames, and that does not seem like sensible physics. Um, okay, so we need to force the reference frames, our coordinate systems, to not be accelerating. But notice that the velocities can be different. So reference frames can have um, different velocities. And um, Newton's laws still work. Okay, so um, even in reference frames with different velocities, we still agree that Newton's second law is true. We still agree that Newton's third law is true. Um, and so in a lot of ways, this is what Newton's first law is all about. Um, if you were in a reference frame that was accelerating, like let's say you were in an airplane that was diving rapidly, or you're in a car that's turning a corner really fast, um, it seems like there are extra forces um, that you can't account for. And that's really just because of your coordinate system. So um, those situations where you're like inside an accelerating car um, don't represent good um, inertial reference frames that we can use Newton's laws in. Um, if you consider those same situations from, let's say, uh, the perspective of the ground or some other um, reference frame, then it's perfectly fine. Newton's laws apply as usual. Um, and so um, this is, the idea here is that we are defining the concept of an inertial reference frame. And inertial reference frames are the ones where Newton's laws apply. Um, so going back to the original question that motivated this um, this discussion, um, are we moving? Can we tell? Does it matter? Um, well, we have answers to some of those things now. So the answer is, yeah, we're probably moving, um, depending on what you're measuring relative to. If you're measuring relative to the sun, the Earth is moving. If you're measuring relative to the galaxy, then the sun is moving. Um, but there is no special object that you can say, okay, this one object is not moving, everything else is moving. You can kind of pick any object you want and say, okay, I'm going to measure relative to this thing. So for our everyday lives, using the Earth as a coordinate system is a perfectly sensible thing to do. Um, does it matter? Well, it kind of matters if um, we have a reference frame that's accelerating. So for instance, the Earth's rotating, which means that there is an acceleration um, that we are experiencing on the surface of the Earth. Um, we ordinarily don't notice it, but there are experiments you can do that can detect that. Um, and similarly, the Sun going around the galaxy or the Earth going around the Sun, those have measurable effects because those are accelerating reference frames. But for the most part, um, in our everyday lives, those accelerations are quite small. And so we can ignore those um, and just pick any reference frame that appears to be at rest um, and work with it. Okay, so this is a really um, nice conclusion. It means that even though we can't tell if we're at rest or not, it really doesn't matter for most things. Um, and actually, this idea that we can use different reference frames and still get sensible answers is going to be really useful to us. We'll be able to use that later in order to solve problems. So just keep in the back of your mind, we can choose convenient reference frames um, to solve problems. So we don't have to um, use the ones that, um, that were given. Um, we can change it to one that's convenient. Um, we just have to change back at the end. Okay, and like I said, we will be doing that in the future, but for now, just kind of keep in the back of your mind that that's a possibility.